guys, welcome to Hip Hughes History. We're banging it out with the Civil Rights Act of 1964. If you're taking a U.S. history course and you don't know this one by the time the final exam rolls around, you're gonna fail, son. So you better check it out. Um, if you're not in school and you're watching, we're not gonna tell anybody, it's a little cray cray. But either way, here we go, bang bang, 1964 Civil Rights Act. All right, here we go. So let's outline kind of the main three bullet points of what the law does. Passed uh, July 2nd, 1964 by Lyndon Baines Johnson. That's really important you get that name down. But number one, it's gonna like federally, officially outlaw discrimination, kind of Jim Crow discrimination based on race, on color, on religion, on sex, or on national origin. Number two, it's gonna ban the practice of unequal um, application of voter registration laws. Many of the southern states were kind of playing with those voter registration laws to make sure that African Americans weren't allowed to register to vote. And number three, and this is the big boy, this is the banning of racial segregation, number one in our schools, number two in the workplace, and number three in places of public accommodation, places that are open to the public. Now, where does the federal government argue it gets its justification to do this? Three places. Number one, Article 1, Section 8, which is that list of delegated powers, includes the Interstate Commerce Clause. So basically stating that uh, because citizens travel to different states, that the federal government, their states are interconnected, has the ability to kind of regulate discrimination. Number two is probably more of a powerful argument, which coming from the 14th Amendment, passed after the Civil War, that states that no state can deny its citizens equal protection under the law. Number three would be the 15th Amendment, and that comes into that voter registration idea um, that the federal government has given the ability, Congress has given the ability, to enforce kind of equal voter registration. Now, uh, let's do a little bit of the backstory. Remember, the three bullet points, outlaw discrimination, it's going to ban the unequal application of voter registration, and ban racial segregation in schools, the workplace, and in public accommodation places. There we go. Let's give you the backstory because it's kind of cool. If not for the death of JFK, we probably would not have gotten the 1964 Civil Rights Act when we did. It was first proposed on June 11, 1963, a full two and a half months before the March on Washington and that famous Martin Luther King, I Have a Dream speech. So in a sense, that Martin Luther King, I Have a Dream speech is really lobbying, is really rallying, is petitioning for this law that JFK has announced that he's supporting. And basically what he's doing, he's bringing back to life a formal law, the Civil Rights Act of 1875, which was passed by radical Republicans um, kind of during the end of the Republican era, which gave the federal government the ability to kind of ban discrimination. Um, and what happened was the Supreme Court ripped that baby up. The Supreme Court was like, I don't think so. And basically stating that uh, the federal government didn't have the ability to kind of regulate what private citizens do in the states. These were the civil rights cases of 1883. So basically we have nothing. We got nada. We got no. We got zip. From 1875 and the 1880s all the way through until 1964. What it comes down to is JFK supporting these basic tenets of the ideas that we've already gone over. Now, he had already introduced the legislation. Congress then you know, wrote that legislation, um, and it got all the way to the Rules Committee in the House. Um, and that is when JFK was assassinated. But when he was living, the Rules Committee was run by um, a House member named Howard W. Smith who was a Virginia Democrat. Really important that you guys get this idea. Democrats are from the South back then, and they're not in favor of integration. They're segregationalists. Most of your KKK members aren't Republicans. They're Democrats way going way back from the Civil War days. So they put the kibosh on that. You know, uh, Representative Smith was like, I don't think so. That's not going anywhere. And then, of course, JFK is assassinated. And um, it's amazing how short after Lyndon Johnson is really going to kind of use JFK's death to push this piece of legislation. It's November 27th, it's only five days after JFK was assassinated that LBJ gives a joint session to Congress where he advocates strongly for this civil rights legislation, bringing up kind of you know, the eulogy of JFK and that if you don't do this, you kind of suck and you kind of have JFK rolling around in his grave. So I think that if you're writing an essay or you're engaged in 
you know, political discussions. I think that's okay to bring up that, you know, um, using the bully pulpit, using the power of the voice of the presidency is really something that uh, can push legislation. So uh, it wasn't like LBJ had the easiest time getting it through, but he has quite an advantage over JFK. Um, he's the former Senate Majority Leader. So this is a guy who knows how to twist arms. This is a guy who knows how to gather votes. And uh, I think he knew that he could get those numbers. So actually what they did in the House, it's really interesting, is they did something called a petition to discharge, which basically means that the House leadership was trying to skip over the Rules Committee who sets the agenda, basically saying, we're going to just skip over you. And, you know, when public opinion really started supporting that law, I think that Howard Smith saw the writing on the wall, and he actually pushed it through the Rules Committee himself, rather than get embarrassed with some kind of petition to discharge, which would have kind of hopscotched over him. Um, there's a bigger problem in the Senate. Senators are much more independent sometimes than House members. They don't always follow the party toe. And there was uh, definitely a Southern Bloc, a Southern Bloc of 19 senators, 18 Democrats, baby. Get that idea down that it's Democrats that are trying to stop this. So at this point, that Southern Bloc, they're going to do everything they can to stop that piece of legislation. It was actually Democratic James Eastland from Mississippi, the senator who was in charge of the Judiciary Committee. And under normal circumstances, he would have been able to stop stop that bill from coming out of his committee. But basically, the leadership pulled a fast one. They uh, didn't do a second reading of the bill and changed the rules to put it right on the floor, where it ended up in a 54-day filibuster. Um, Robert Byrd, the senator from West Virginia, again, a Democrat and a former member, I think, of the KKK, um, did a was a 14-hour, 13-minute filibuster, stood up there for 14 hours trying to kill this piece of legislation, basically saying that it was tyranny and radical republicanism. But at the end of the day, we're going to moderate the bill. They took out some of the private discrimination um, language and kept it to public accommodations, and they ended up with more than 70 votes pushing that through the Senate and getting that bill signed. Now, um, at the end of the day, there's going to be some court challenges. Um, the heart of Atlanta Hotel, Motel versus United States, 1964, is it's going to have the Supreme Court uphold the use of the Interstate Commerce Clause in order to ban discrimination in public accommodations. It's also going to blossom into uh, some gender protections when we get to the titles like Title IX and sports funding. And it's really, I think, the beginning of uh, federal legislation designed to make things more fair in the states. We're going to get the 1965 Voting Rights Act. And even if you fast forward 30 years and go into the 1990s, the Americans with Disabilities Act is really modeled after that kind of concept of federal protection for people that states aren't protecting. So there you go. You can disagree. You can agree. I don't care. Jim corn. I don't care. Leave it down in the comments below. So there you go, guys. That's the 1964 Civil Rights Act. If you haven't subscribed, I don't know how else to ask, but nicely, you, you, would you mind subscribing to Hip Hughes History? It'd be great. There you go. That's about as nice as I get. Where attention goes, energy flows, guys. We'll see you next time when we do a little teaching on the YouTubes.